In this talk, we present a Bayesian framework for image reconstruction using deep generative models. Given an input image that has been corrupted, our method can perform super resolution as well as in painting to reconstruct high quality clear images. For this, our method uses uh, state of the art deep generative models such as TileGAN2 that have been pre trained on large datasets of human faces. In particular, our method does not need retraining for every change in the corruption model. For example, for super resolution, if we change the degradation severity or the blur kernel, our method can still reconstruct them. Similarly, for in painting, if we change the mask uh, or the shape of the mask. Moreover, we can sample multiple reconstructions from a given image um, from the posterior and even capture the mean of the posterior reconstruction. We demonstrate our method not just for human faces, but also for two challenging medical data sets, such as a, a chest X-ray data set, as well as a brain MRI data set. So how does our method work? Previous methods have been able to use deep generative models to perform image reconstruction and to even sample from the posterior using, for example, Langevin dynamics. However, this is very slow, um, often gets stuck in modes and gives correlated samples because of the Markov chain. Similarly, variational inference has also been recently used um, to, in combination with deep generative models to sample from the posterior distribution. However, this has only been demonstrated for invertible flow models, and it's currently unclear how one can use get, uh, generative adversarial networks or uh, variational autoencoders to perform uh, image reconstruction and to sample from the posterior distribution. Our contribution is therefore to formulate a Bayesian framework for inverse problems with deep generative models, which allows optimizing distributional losses instead of point estimates. We further demonstrate variational inference for GAN-based models, such as the StarGAN2 and, or, and ADA, which are currently state-of-the-art in image generation. And finally, we also uh, show how we can use the latent, the alert latent space of the GAN to perform the reconstruction, instead of uh, doing the reconstruction directly in the image space. The first step of our method is to pre-train a StarGAN2 generator on human faces. Afterwards, given an input image that has been degraded, our method can generate a similar low resolution image by taking a high resolution image and passing it through a known corruption model F that has been defined a priori. To generate a high resolution image, our method uses the StarGAN2 generator that has been pre-trained and, and passes a, a latent vector W as input to it. Finally, a loss function is computed between the input image as well as the simulated downsampled image by, by back uh, propagating uh, the gradients through the pipeline all the way to the latent vector w while keeping the weight of the network g as well as the function f fixed a priori a naive reconstruction loss can be performed by uh, using the l2 loss between the input image i and the simulated downsampled image f composed with g of w however this only optimizes the point estimate instead of a distributional loss in our Bayesian approach, we instead optimize an entire posterior distribution of clean images given the input corrupted image I. And by Bayes' theorem, this is proportional to the prior overall clean images, hence the likelihood of observing the input degraded image I given the clean images. However, the difficulty with this approach is that it's difficult to assign likelihood scores to the clean images and the reconstructions. To illustrate this, if we given an input image that has been degraded, it's difficult to assign likelihood scores to the potential solutions of the reconstruction and even to images outside the solution set. And in particular with GAN models, this is not possible to do. However, our insight is that we can use the latent distribution of the GAN model to estimate the posterior distribution in the latent space and then use a GAN transformation G to map that latent distribution, uh, latent posterior, into the posterior of the images in the image space. Mathematically, we do this by defining the prior over the clean images as the distribution of the coverage set of the GAN generator G given latent vector W. And by a change of variable transformation, this is equal to the density at that W times the inverse of the Jacobian determinant of the transformation G evaluated at W. 
Similarly, for the likelihood model of observing the image uh, eye that has been degraded, given the clean image, we perform a similar change of variable transformation, this time with respect to the known corruption model F. Therefore, we reconstruct the posterior as an optimization over W. So we have the posterior over W, given the input image I, where W is the latent vector, is proportional to the prior over W times the likelihood of observing image I given W. And this is equal to the prior over W times the uh, likelihood model of I given F composed with G of W times the Jacobian determinant, inverse Jacobian determinant, of F composed with G of W. We now sample multiple reconstructions through variational inference. Given the posterior distribution over latent vectors W for a particular input image I that is corrupted, variational inference aims to approximate it with a variational distribution Q over W given a set of variational parameters theta that need to be optimized. So the aim of the variational inference is to estimate the optimal variational parameters theta that minimize the KL divergence between the variational distribution Q and the true posterior distribution P. And this is equal to the expected value of the distribution Q over W of the log of the ratio between the variational distribution in Q and the true posterior distribution P. In practice, this integral is intractable, so we approximate it through Monte Carlo sampling. In our implementation, we instantiated the variational distribution Q as a Gaussian distribution, although in practice, due to the Monte Carlo sampling, we can actually use more flexible implementations, such as mixtures of Gaussians, or any other distribution as long as we can sample from it. To illustrate, if we given an input image that has been occluded with a mask, we can now estimate the mean of the posterior distribution, as well as samples along the mean that capture the entire distribution of potential solutions to the ill-posed problem. Our method obtains state-of-the-art results in both super resolution as well as in painting, and these results have been confirmed through quantitative evaluation. In particular, our method is most competitive in extremely ill-posed scenarios, such as high degradation in super resolution, uh, in particular at very low input resolutions, as well as for large occlusion masks in the case of in-painting. Our manuscript is available online, and we further provide code and collab demos in, in both PyTorch as well as TensorFlow. And finally, we'd like to acknowledge our sponsors for making this work possible, in particular the MIT IBM Watson AI Lab, as well as the National Institutes of Health. Thank you for listening. Let me ask you, Razman, a question that I've been curious about. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, but you're using a pre-trained style again too, right, without fine-tuning it any further, which, yeah. which, and so correct me if I'm wrong, but does that mean that as powerful as your probabilistic model might be, at the end of the day, it, it could be limited by some of the weaknesses of the, of the underlying generative model? And if so, then what could you what could you do about that to get, get around that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, exactly. So we use a fixed pre-trained uh, Stargan two model uh, to do the inference. Um, that means that yes. So Stargan two and as with the many generative models, can have various uh, uh, problems and limitations. And one of them, for example, with Stargan yeah. two and Ada is that they have a limited coverage. So for example, they won't be able to um, cover any absolutely any human face or any. Uh, uh, brain image that uh, that exists in the world. So, um, if you try to reconstruct yeah. an uh, yeah a similar image, it uh, yeah it might. You're just not aware of that coverage ahead of time. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, and uh, and there's several yeah there's several things you can do about it. And um, uh, and one thing is um, for example, you can try to look at how to um, how do you um, for, for example, you, you can try to take the generator and try to fine tune the weights, for example. So give, given a, an input image at test time, you can actually go back to the generator and try to fine tune the weights. Um, and actually, this is an approach that uh, several uh, people have explored. Um, there was a paper on a, called Deep Image Prior from SDPI, which was uh, looking into that. And um, the, But the main thing is that, um, so there's two things with that. So you can actually you can actually do that if you keep fine tuning the generator, you can actually get reach quite a perfect reconstruction, but there's a couple things to keep in mind. So one thing is that um, you break causality, the first thing. So essentially, uh, if, if, you, if you were interested in doing causal model modeling pipeline, we have like, for example, like an initial model A that generates the images and then another model mm -hmm. um, 
afterwards that corrupts the images and these are actually causally related because the corruption model is independent causally independent from the image generation process and then by doing that they actually break the causality uh, mm -hmm. structure of the model so um so then uh, it will mean that uh, the model for the image generation will become dependent on the corruption process and um and that that means for example you cannot causally look at interventions in a in a in a, in a, in a proper way and there's also um uh, and, and of course, but at the same time, if you keep doing that, uh, you you can also think that you um, you end up reaching a, a regime which is very similar to a deep image prior uh, work yeah. from a few years ago, where essentially like you have you start with a random network, um, you and you fine tune the weights up until you actually reach um, the desired solution, and you you stop somewhere in between for that kind of given reconstruction. So so this if you keep doing that, there's a trade off. Get all the way. There's a trade off, yeah. and you can get all the way to that kind of approach that makes a lot of sense thanks are there any sort of next steps uh and future works that you're particularly excited about that's related to your line of work in terms of next steps there, there's several that are really interesting so uh, so some of the uh, things that would be super interesting to do uh, coming up is um so so one thing with our model is that it right now assumes a, a non-corruption function for example so so when does the reconstruction is it assumes that the corruption model is known and has some parameters that are known. Um, what one one very interesting direction is to actually explore um, this work when you don't know the corruption model and you try to estimate a, a parametric family of the corruption model and estimate the parameters, and uh, as well as the latent. So uh, all together, so this is super interesting. There was one paper a couple of years ago that has uh, uh, done something like that, but uh, there's much more that can be done in this direction. Um, there's also. Um, um, we also super interested in uh, in the medical domain. So so here we we've done we started uh, looking into this like uh, brain uh, imaging data, for example, but um, using a very uh, basic corruption model. In practice, what happens with brain MRIs, so in particular in the magnetic resonance imaging, is that the acquisition of the, of the imaging is actually not done in the image space; it's done in a Fourier space, also called K space. So and and the corruption that is that happens there in the K space um, could be things like yeah, um, caused by uh, the fact that the patient moves in the scanner, for example, and there's like motion corruption, and there's also maybe under sampling of where you don't want to measure all the points, and you want to measure only a few points, and then you have to apply a Fourier transformation to get back the image. So, so modeling that uh, corruption uh, function properly in the medical domain is uh, something very, very important uh, for as, as an next step. Uh, so, what what we showed in in our work is that how we can actually do it. We, we showed like a, a direction of possibility, but in practice, it actually modeling corruption model is uh, uh, accurately is something that we should, we will focus on next. And um, um, yes, and and in general, um, any any kind of like so again, how how can we do this? Uh, how can this cause of modeling I was talking about earlier? So that's this is something super interesting with thinking about how if you have another pipeline of models, uh, how do you? Um, Properly model them in a causal manner, and, uh, and how do you, yeah, model interventions uh, at each at each point? So that's something that we want to look at. Yeah. 